<laughs> this is the worst car ever made. I put over an intention to fix it up and modify it in entertainment ways, but the car turned out to be way worse than advertised. I had a lot of modification ideas, but to make it more interesting, I decided to ask you guys what you want to see next. And there were a lot of suggestions. So thanks to all the viewers who became members and donated $1 towards this project, we're finally able to actually modify it. So one of the suggestions I see a lot is putting the baby on board sticker. Here's the baby, by the way. I don't think they're referring to me. His name is Jerry. Jerry, say hi. There's a baby on board. And then I kind of thought to myself, why stop there? We have an entire family in the car, so... These stickers must have increased the value of this car, like even doubled. But I feel like something is still missing, or I have an idea. Perfect. So judging by the comment section, a lot of you guys have suggested fixing the transmission and the shifter. Except it's kind of a more complicated of an issue. Oh wait, never mind. This guy says it should be easy. He says... I changing the shift knob base to making it less wiggly and more sturdy. Should only be a couple of bolts inside the cabin under the dust skirt. You know best. Cheeseburger Big Mac Whopper. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what he meant by the last part, but here's the new shifter and I think it's a perfect fit because there's a lot of skeletons telling me to fix it. So this one is for you guys, you know who you are. Is it just me or the entire car shakes whenever I use the shifter? That's a good sound. All right, it shouldn't be that difficult after all. Wait a second. Wait a minute. Oh no, don't tell me. Are you kidding me? This is the shifter. Like this entire stick is part of the shifter. This is what keeps it in place. Also, look how gross it is. I think I need to censor it, honestly. It's just a stick. I like the stuff I did for the shifter in transmission was like underneath. I never tried to take off the shifter. Um, yeah, I don't think the shifter is very compatible, but I got some adapters, fortunately. <laughs> I just really hope the entire shifter is not gonna fly off the moment somebody tries to pull it. It's gonna be like a little surprise, a little Grim Reaper surprise. Unsafe, but fun. Oh, and I lost it forever. So this is the size of the thing that keeps this whole thing together. I need three of these and I just dropped one and there's no chance I'm ever finding it again. So it's gonna be held together of two. Should be safe enough. It looks so dumb. This thing is gonna fly off eventually. Somebody's gonna, gonna die. I'm just not gonna sugarcoat it. Somebody's gonna die. Hopefully it won't be me, but what a way to go out. I mean, realistically, how often are you going to pull the shifter? I mean, you can still shift with this, but how safe is that? Probably one of the more safe things in this car, to be fully honest with you guys, but the bar is so low. Not great, not terrible. I think that's what they say. Are you supposed to hold them like this or are you supposed to hold them like this? I don't like this because we're like putting fingers in, in its mouth. Hold on, hold on. Make sure to brush your teeth really nice. I made a lot of interesting purchases for this project, but one of the biggest ones is of course the cannon. Once again, this is a real cannon that we can actually fire. So click the link down below to send me a dollar so we can actually make it happen at some point. You will also end up on this wall as well as the car itself. And as you can see, at some point the printer broke. So I decided to write the rest of the names manually all by hand. It took me two days <laughs> and that's not even all, but I'm a man of my word. We will just have to increase the cost. Otherwise I will spend all my free time just writing names. As of right now, the cannon is just intimidation tactic as well as the ballast or anchor if you will. Also, I just realized somebody stole this sign from our neighborhood recently. I really hope they find the person responsible for this, because uh, that's really evil, that's really bad. I can't believe somebody would do this. I've seen a lot of people suggesting that we should buy another cannon or make the existing one point outside of the car, but unfortunately, that's not very safe. Well, relatively to the rest of the car, of course. So I 3D printed an entirely new cannon, so I could mount it somewhere inside the car without denting the car itself, since the car is built like a soda can. Yeah, it's pretty durable. More durable than the car. Don't worry about it. So this is what a full assemble cannon looks like. And as you can see, it's also fairly light. I can hold it like this, actually. Huh? There we go. And here they are side by side. As you can see, the fake one is actually way more intimidating than the real one, at least in my personal opinion. Now I just gotta figure out how to mount this thing. By the way, the only reason why this cannon exists in the first place is because Bumble Lab sent us their 3D printer. Not a sponsor, they just really liked our project. And by the way, their stuff is actually pretty good. Jerry is entirely 3D printed using their printer. Oh, this is way worse than I thought it would be. There's something growing in here. Is that actual mold? This is how this car actually came here. Oh my god. is that the whole point of the rear windshield? That you can easily remove it? And in case of emergency? I mean, to be fair, whenever you're in this car, you're always in a state of emergency, so... A success. So I bought some acrylic glass, but there's one problem. It's way too small. It's better than nothing, I guess. Yeah, who needs to measure anyways? So my idea was to cut out two of these as accurately as possible and then just mount them together. Oh, that's the wrong tool. Or maybe it's the right tool. 
I never had to cut glass before, so I didn't expect it to be this complicated. I thought this would be super simple, like just cutting plastic. Turns out it wasn't. And this thing is way more durable than it should be. It's more durable than the glass that is on the Yugo. I must admit that despite the cool idea, I should have done more research. But the question is, did it actually work? I'm just gonna align it. Fits perfect. Okay, so I do have a potential solution to this problem, but it will require me to remove the AC. And I'm also concerned that once I lock this door, I will not be able to unlock it since the key broke last time. I actually have an even better idea, at least for now. So I figured I'll get two birds with one stone since a lot of you guys have expressed your concerns about the safety of this car. In this household, we like this thing called safety. So I have a couple of ideas how I can bring some safety to this car because it's clearly lacking it. Can I just do this? Apparently I can. So the rear seats are not exactly child safe, and they also make it much harder to maintain the AC. Because I'm just kind of wondering what kind of seat we can put in there, because I don't want to spend too much money. Uh-oh. Let me just uh, get some speed holes for extra safety. Let's secure this whole thing in place. I have a perfect idea for that. Oh, God. Uh, well, who could have thought that the only thing that separates you from this and the AC was uh, six tiny bolts. So there's a reason why I made those speed holes. They actually serve a purpose. Okay, let's tighten it up. Yeah, look, it's very safe. Yeah, people will love it. Either it's gonna work really well or it's gonna be really painful to the passenger. Make sure to over tighten everything, always. Now we have one, two, three points of failure. Okay, maybe four. Oh God. Um, well, let's just hope that's not gonna happen. This works and the AC is accessible. So if I wanna turn it on, if I ever wanna change the filters, I can just, uh, you know, pop it open. Cool, cool. Oh man, shout out to James Key. All right, now let's make the rest of this thing more secure. Oh yeah, in case you were wondering how the AC was mounted. Uh, well, this is how. It doesn't feel like there is a safety latch to open it if somebody gets trapped in the trunk. They didn't really think that one true or that's a part of the design. The best defense is the offense, said the guy who got stabbed. But in our use case scenario, the cannon actually gives a bit of a sense of security. And that's why we're going to mount it at the back of the car, so it can intimidate the potential tailgaters. Now here's the question, how do we actually mount this entire cannon inside the Yugo? Well, I do have an idea. Wow, it's actually perfect size. This time, at least. Oh yeah, the perfect stability. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm following the line pretty well. All right, so moment of truth. Let's see if it actually fits. Because uh, I didn't really properly measure it, but it actually fits perfect. It actually fits perfect. It just needs some weather seal, I guess. Now, how can we make the cannon stick out? Well, do I have news for you? Oh my gosh, okay. Well, it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. It's supposed to have an attachment over here, but I don't think it came with one. So this may make things a little bit more complicated, but fine, let's give it a try. Yeah, that seems to be about right size. Wait. Did I do the exhaust? Oh my god, I did the exhaust instead of the intake. Now there's dust everywhere. Real glue over here, a little bit over here. And now I just gotta hold it in place. All oh, right, it takes like 24 hours. Oh, uh, hold on, I have an idea. Can you come down to the garage? I have a really fun game here going. I love games. I love games so, so much. Yeah, I have a okay. really fun game for you. You should definitely join it. So it's a two player game. Yeah, yeah, I'll make sure to join. All right. He's coming, right? Welcome to the game. I think this amount of Gorilla Glue will certainly keep this whole thing in place the moment somebody opens the window and all the draft goes into the car. Wait, I have a, like actual proper weather seal. Why am I using this? I had that weather seal for like four years. Hopefully it's not expired. It's expired. I do believe I have Gorilla Tape. I cut myself on tape. I seen like not while recording, but I seen I cut myself while unpacking the tape. Gosh darn, I'm not lying, trying to make a pun. Look at this. Yep, that's pretty safe. I wonder if this thing actually still works. Wait, how do I use this? Well, it sure sounds like it's working. Should I just attach sandpaper to it so it just sends the whole thing? Oh my god, it's actually perfect size. Yeah, that looks fairly intimidating. Hold on, I have an idea. Don't get too close. This thing stalls on inclines and just roads. And maybe I should add like a QR code that just links to my jameski.com website where you can buy the shirt. I wonder how many people will actually buy it and not rear-end me. I finally had a chance to upgrade this racing seat of a appropriate racing harness. What is the harness attached to? I don't know. Do you want to be the one to find out? Yeah, I didn't think so. Oh, let's get the child. I think he likes it. He looks safe. 
In the previous episode, we managed to remove the spare wheel, so now we have a lot more space in the engine bay. Now, a lot of you guys have been asking me to upgrade the engine. You guys suggested all sorts of engines, big engines, small engines, but we're on a budget. And the budget is determined by how many people buy the merchandise or use the link down below. However, I do have some good news for you. I have created the world's first turbo system powered by a hamster wheel. And yes, it works as well as you would expect it. I don't know how much HP we're gonna get out of this, but HP stands for hamster power, right? So, at least one, probably. Unless it's a big hamster. Unfortunately, none of my friends had a hamster, but my neighbors let me borrow their guinea pig. I think that will do. But don't worry guys, we're actually planning some performance modifications for this car, we're just on a very tight budget. But there is one performance modification that I can actually do right now, and that is the exhaust. So I got this, which is about twice the size of the current exhaust tip, but then I was like, that's a little bit too small. So then I made this. This is about three times the size of the exhaust tip, but then I thought to myself, why stop there? So I made this. But then I thought to myself, why stop there? Because I'm out of money. I'm like actually out of money. And then I got a call from my accountant. Oh my God, this thing is massive. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. This is actually very intimidating. Jesus Christ, it's sticking out so much. I'm afraid to imagine what it's gonna sound like. Well, as much as I hate to say it, it's finally time to drive it. By the way, I slightly modified the car so it's more safe during the rain. So now it uses indoor portable AC. It's not exactly as good, but it's just safer this way relatively. Today is also a very special day, because I managed to convince my friend to drive the Yugo instead of just being a passenger. But I didn't tell him about the modifications I've done. So my first objective is to make it to him alive. Just got to readjust the rear mirror, the one that the head does have. That was not a good sound. So one of the blinkers stopped working, but what about the exhaust? It sounds louder, but it didn't make us any faster. People still keep overtaking us from the right, sometimes even from the lane where you're not legally allowed to drive in the first place. I have a right blinker, but I don't have a left one for some reason. I used to have both. Oh god, this will destroy something underneath this car. Surprisingly, it's going really smooth in the fourth gear. It's the first and the second gear that are probably the sketchiest ones in this car. I don't even know if they're there. I have a feeling that the previous owner just didn't have a chance to use the fourth gear as much. The car didn't even make it that far. It's working surprisingly well. Speed limit 35, now that's my territory. It's safe. I'm um, genuinely impressed. Got the uh, cannon, you know, people, you know, stay away. I feel like people know to stay away even without the cannon. You'd be surprised. I don't know what to say right now. They should say, I'm really excited to drive it myself. You know what, good point. So just a couple of warnings. For some reason, the left blinker doesn't work anymore, so you have to use your arm. The right one does work. But that also implies we have to somehow gesture that there's hazards on whenever we have hazards. I can put it this way. If we're driving a BMW. Ah, right. Okay, so that's all we have. One, two, and three, right? We have four, and the four is the smoothest one of them all, because I think the car just didn't survive enough to, you know, for somebody to use the fourth much. Reverse is somewhere over there. Have fun. So I'm guessing this thing that literally does not have enough power to, um, ooh. Yeah, it does have the right blinker, but not the left. Well, we don't need to worry about blinkers here. I advise not breaking too hard because one thing that I forgot to secure is a giant AC unit behind you. We don't need that. I prefer to have some comfort. What have I gotten myself into? Fun. We're gonna drive like BMW people, so with no care in the world. You see, they're keeping distance. They don't look concerned at all. Another day in paradise. Uh-oh. Okay, we actually, okay, we survived. Wow. I don't know if the engine can handle that much abuse. It's taking it so far, so I'll take it as a win. I think we're going in between 40 and 30. It shakes so much, it's real hard to tell. The fuel gauge also goes up and down. Everything is just guessing on this car. Absolutely. This is a one degree incline, by the way. I just want to point that out. I don't know what red line's at, but I'm holding it. It's somewhere. It's somewhere. <laughs> you know it's a red line because it starts misfiring. Yeah. You just hear pops. The pops and then it like drops down even though you're still pushing the gas pedal. Regardless of why it does that, I think we can just blame it on the Yugo call it a day. What are the engineers gonna do about it? The country doesn't even exist anymore, so. <laughs> this person purposely just got closer to us, I just realized. Oh no. We're not, we're not doing anything. I think they're just trying to read the letters, the spell out a sentence that says, do not get too close. I think that... The light turned greener because they use the horn. Have you reached the fourth gear yet? Nope. Okay, that, that one actually feels smooth. Oh, it does, wow. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like the only gear that actually feels like a gear. You know what the funny thing is, is that there was a Toyota Corolla behind us the entire time we were talking mm -hmm. that was edging closer and closer. And it's like, the it doesn't help that we're on an incline. They use the horn as well the moment it turned green. Yeah, they are doing us a favor. Like. <laughs> 
Yugo is not a car, it's an appliance. It's a really dangerous appliance. There are a lot of dangerous appliances in the US. Yeah, I think this one is like top three. Top three? Yeah. Does it take a one, two, and three? That, that did sound too good. Now we're looking on the heat because that's the sound that it does usually whenever it overheats really bad. Does the temperature gauge say anything at all? What temperature gauge? Oh. <laughs> yeah, that temperature gauge. If you couldn't see the needle, it's probably because it's all the way up. I'm running really low. Yeah. Yeah. I think I hear the exhaust. <laughs> I think it is. I think it actually is the exhaust. And I almost broke. That was definitely the exhaust there. I think we're making progress here. I'm learning where... You got it. Okay, it's really questionable when I'm in gear. Clutch is really not as bad as I thought. Yeah, the clutch is not the concern. The rest of the car is. <laughs> the car is built around the clutch. I don't think the transmission was built for this car. I fixed up a bunch of small stuff a while back, but I mean, it's still... Like the exhaust? It's, it's, yeah. When it was imported to the US yeah. originally, just like all the Yugos, they didn't actually uh, pass any emissions whatsoever. They had a bunch of like emission control equipment and yeah. it didn't work at all. Really? So, yeah, so it failed the emissions, but they still allowed them to sell them for a bit. So it lowers the horsepower or hamster power. Yeah. But it doesn't actually help with the emissions. Oh. We're probably responsible for 10% of like Netherlands sinking right now. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I, I think I can sleep soundly with knowing that. Sooner the better. You might want to turn on the headlights. It may turn off the brake lights. Where? Uh, on the left. Oh, yeah. One of those. Is that it? I, I guess so. I hope so. Yeah, this is the headlights. So I checked the battery. The battery is good. It's just the car just doesn't del deliver enough like power to the rest of the system. Like really? all the analog stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. That's, the, that's the reason why the left blinker doesn't work right now. It used to work huh? up until today. But it's pretty fortunate that we're missing a left blinker, not the right one. Yeah. Because you can actually check if somebody's to your left using the mirror on the left. Meanwhile, meanwhile the mirror on the right. How okay are you with me dumping the clutch on wet ground? YOLO. <laughs> yeah, um, that, that was a police camera, by the way. I'm actually surprised that the transmission hasn't left the car when he did that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I heard a couple clunks and I was like, I'm just not going to worry about that. I can see why you like it so much. What do you mean, like it? <laughs> Tolerate it. <laughs> Tolerate it, yeah. I think that's a better word. Yeah. Want to race him? Yeah. He's trying to get advantage, you know, because he knows he can't keep up with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to get away from that guy. <laughs> It's getting a little close up on me. Writing on the back of the car was a big mistake because people are trying to get closer because they didn't really calculate how much space do I need with the cannon sticking yeah. out. So I had to use small letters and people are getting closer so they can read it. Here's the problem. If I just say stay away, people will get closer. But if I say stay away, this car will explode. I will get a knock on the door. I have to find a balance between the two. Look how close this guy is getting. He's purposely getting closer. At this point, just kiss me. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that at all. I wouldn't do that absolutely at all. Oh, right. The, the pipe. It's not overheating yet. Yeah. I gotta put a sticker inside this car. You break it, you fix it. <laughs> kind of like a waiver whenever somebody gets in the car, especially you. Um, good thing is we're small enough where we can stay in the same lane. <laughs> well, the good thing is that I can say is that we made it alive. We made it in one piece. I just want to make sure though. Oh yeah, yeah, you have to like pull it all the way. Um, temperature is going up a little bit, but we should be okay. After saying goodbye to my friend Jason, I discovered a lot of new issues. That did not, oh my God, what has he done? Barely goes in the first gear anymore. Yeah. I just really hope I'll come back in one piece. Oh, the temperature does go up, uh-oh. The alignment on this car is completely messed up and I don't even know what caused it. Surprisingly, I'm keeping up with all the traffic and nobody's overtaking me from the right. Oh, because they're busy overtaking other people from the right. To be fair, if I can keep up with this car, they probably deserve to be overtaken from the right. Oh, that definitely doesn't sound nor smell good. Is it overheating? Oh, it's definitely overheating. Okay, I think we need to get some big work done in the engine bay and I think I'm gonna make it happen soon. Am I in the first? I don't even know if I was. I managed to get home alive, but the transmission is completely gone. Also, the engine failed again from overheating, so clearly it's finally time for a big overhaul. I'm going to do something for this Yugo that's never been done before, but it will take time and a lot of money, so please click the link below to make it happen. I have so many cool ideas and plans for this car, and I'm really grateful to you guys for your support on this side project that I'm doing completely out of my pocket. I never thought that my intrusive thought would put us in this kind of situation, but if you enjoy this even a little bit, that's all that truly matters. We also just released new merchandise and are shipping existing 
existing orders, so once again, if you want to see us continue the series, please consider either becoming a member or getting a nice short for yourself or your friends. Trust me, it will be worth it.